It's always an exciting day when you take a new Ferrari for its first laps at the Nürburgring, and that is what we are doing today with my 296 GTS. In fact, we are here in the Eiffel Mountains, right beside the entry of the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife. Now, I've driven here quite a few times in many different Schmiermobiles. In fact, I think this will be the fifth Ferrari that I've actually driven around the green hell. But I tell you what, over 800 horsepower, I think that screams like this, it's gonna be good fun today, I think. What we do know is that this is going to be fast, very freaking fast, 830 horsepower, hybrid twin turbo V6, mid-engined, rear driven, it's a recipe for a whole lot of fun. But the first, I think, Ferrari I ever drove here was actually my FF. I took my FF around for some demo laps. I also then drove in Robert Mitchell from Apex's 488 Pista. I've also driven here with my SF90, my GTC4 Lusso. And now this is number five, the 296 GTS, the convertible version of the 296, a car that up to this point, I've not really done enough with, and you guys have been telling me all about that, hence why we transported it out with Turbo Transport here to Germany to go have some fun with it. I think it's fair to say that on paper, this is not the perfect Nürburgring car. That's why I want to see, hey, that's why I want to see what it's actually like. I mean, realistically, you'd want one with the Assetto Fiorano, the Fiorano package, which gives you the stiffer Multimatic dampers, and mine is also the GTS, the convertible with the retractable hardtop, as opposed to the 296. GTB. You can hear from all the engine noises in the background that this is the place to be. And this is a Schmiermobile, which means it needs to be driven here. It is a rite of passage that each car of my collection comes out here new or old, which might be some work in the future with the likes of the 914. But this needs to go and do a couple of laps, be induced into the garage correctly. But up to this point, I haven't really done very much with it. You guys made that very clear. It's out here now. We're going to go and drive it. So let's hop in and get cracking on. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where it's time for my 296 GTS here at the Nürburgring. Heading over to the Tourist and Bartem entrance. Now, the kind of crazy thing is that prior to the road we are on right at this second, I am yet to drive this car in any kind of performance way because literally the last outing before it was shipped over here to Nürburgring was to take it up to Yorkshire Car Restoration to visit my 914, which completed the running in process. It's now ready and raring to go, but we've got a bit of a twisty road up ahead of us. I need to figure out the settings. Of course, a lot of it is familiar from the SF90 Stradale, which I have driven here at the Nürburgring. The biggest difference is, of course, the engine and the drivetrain configuration, this being rear driven with a single electric motor as opposed to the all wheel drive system of the SF90 with the two electric motors that it has up front. But I tell you what, on these kind of roads, smooth, twisty, snaking through the trees, it feels very much at home. And in a minute, I can't wait to see what it's like because the 296 is ballistically fast. Anybody who's driven one of these knows that it's also quite easy to drive it very, very fast. But we're in performance mode at the moment, so you do have qualifying above this on the e Manatino, performance just slightly holds back some of the power in favor of charging up the battery so that you do have full go and maintain some e-drive as well when i was here with the sf90 i actually did as much as i could of an electric lap which got me about 14 kilometers around around two thirds of the nordschleife but we're in manual we're in race mode so you have wet sport race ct off basically everything off but we're not going to be going for that today because it is still slightly wet just had a little slip before the camera was rolling out here so we need to be a bit sensible with what's going on but this engine this piccolo v12 the v6 engine that screams away just sounds mega the question that remains is will the roof be up or down for this lap and I don't know the answer to that, but this, this is the most aggressively I've driven this car to date, right at this second. And it is absolutely wonderful. This is seriously cool. Behind a group of bikes, I believe the Nordschleifer is closed to bikes today because of the busyness, which is um, something else to bear in mind. Oh my gosh, that engine sound is insane. So, roof up, roof down. I think we might go roof, uh, roof up, 
but with the window down or roof down we'll see in a second we've got a little bit of traffic gt3 going the other way we've got a little bit of traffic before we get there to start it off but settings wise i think we're all good everything feels nice everything feels comfortable we've got a full tank of fuel we've got one and a half thousand kilometers or so on the car and there's definitely a traffic jam out there which is going to make it uh we need a little bit of a cool down section at the end of the lap before we sit there and smoke the brakes because let's be honest it is a hybrid it's a little bit heavier than the uh, regular combustion engine only vehicles a little bit more of a workout on the brakes although the Nordschleifer is actually not so bad for that in the first place and it's now my fifth Ferrari. I'm going to be driving at the green hell. Let's get up to the entrance and get on out there. Up to the barrier we roll. Can I reach it? Yes. We are golden. So, out we head. Usual range of cars around. 718 GT4. No, 981 GT4. Uh, we've got a F-Type, some BMWs, some Minis. Got a M4 behind me. Let this Porsche go out in front. Cool, so we've got the rear window down, little chicane to go do the first ever lap with this thing. All right, tire pressures are set, performance and race. Do you know what, I might keep the rear window closed actually just to get familiarized first lap out. Obviously it's been wet, you can see there are still some wet lines around. We do have kind of normal tires though, which makes life a little bit easier. So out we go, and this is my first, well, even there sliding first full throttle acceleration that sound is incredible and the swooshes as well <laughs> the f-type is absolutely on it so we don't want to get caught up in that although could make for a nice little fun drive oh i've got the emergency braking system that is totally totally annoying when the car in front slams on the brake, this car is doing the same. So we need to get some temps in the tires to get some grip. But come along with me. Let's, uh, let's roll this. Let's have some fun. Head through. Oh, it feels so dancey and playful. Oh, this is awesome. You just let it roll. Even more fun following a... Uh, Horse car who is absolutely, absolutely flying. Oh, the sound! I've never heard a 296 at full throttle. The course car is now sitting right behind me. What? This is ballistic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I knew this would be fast, but this thing is absolutely insanely fast. Something must have happened to the F-Type because he has slowed down quite dramatically. What on earth? Take it easy, this is first lap. Signs warning of uh, an oil spill. So as we go through Schwedenkreuz and around to Arenburg, we definitely want to be conscious of that. This is all the new section for this year. I think the F-Type was basically waiting for me, which is normally what I try to avoid, but let's see what happens, because here, through the trees, you can see it is a little bit wet, and we don't want any problems there. Then we've got the big new curb at the top to avoid, especially with nice expensive for Ferrari suspension, which nobody wants to have to deal with, replacing that is. Here at an hour first. Woo! The swoosh 
pictures and sounds of this are absolutely extraordinary. This is the thing, we've got the throttle up the hill here. As we come to Bagwag, this car is so insanely fast. go and we're quickly catching him up again. I mean look at this. He's a quick driver from how he was going through the tighter sections. But here, this thing is so fast. The swooshes are just epic. I'm being quite gentle with the brakes. You could brake a significantly stronger amount than this. Sorry, losing my wording as we come up to Carousel. He dropped in super late. As we ride the concrete slabs, take it gently, very little to win in terms of time through there. This is where everyone goes straight on, not realizing it goes around to the left, up towards Hoa Act, the highest point on the Nordschleife lap. Starting to get a bit of tire squeal. So we go through Ripperman. <laughs> That's one of the least bad curbs for the car. Now we come to Runchen, the famous part, YouTube corner. It's gonna be on the outside line around here. Down towards Flansgarten and the jump, little break before, steady the car. slightly softer suspension than the Black Series, so you feel the compressions even more. Absolute madness, this thing. I'm going to take it easy, plus there's a GT3 RS coming past. Right at the end of the lap. Yes! That car's actually been staying just down from us. Oh, I've left my blinker on. There we go. That's off now through Little Carousel. Wow, 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 wow. First lap nearly complete in this as we come around Galgenkopf, the last corner. Keep it on the inside, let these guys come through because at the end of the day, I'm conscious of my brakes and they are very expensive because we have factory carbon ceramics on here. Round towards the gantry, the end of the Nürburgring lap, another GT3 RS. That sounded insane. Wow. <laughs> this was cool. It's a little bit floaty and playful. It's not a track spec car. It's very much a road car. You can feel that immediately, but it gets a move on and it feels a bit edgy. It feels fun. It feels exciting. And that was a really cool experience to 
drive it like that. We have drained fuel like you would not believe on that lap. But here we are, getting ready to line back up, join the queue, and uh, get ready to go again. After the little cut through, we are ready to join. The BMW here kindly letting us through. Got a Corvette C8 behind as well. And this time, I'm actually gonna press qualifying mode. So we will finish the lap effectively with no battery charge left, which is the whole point of qualifying, right? The one lap wonder, but obviously more targeted at a lap of Fiorano or a traditional GP circuit than targeted at a lap as long as this one. So let's go, warmer tires, get the grip. Oh my days. What on earth is the acceleration of this thing? <laughs> to 230 before the compression here. Got to watch out for the slippiness around here at the first corners. You can now turn off there, should you wish, to the rest stop and fuel station that they actually have here. As we come through Sabine Schmidt's curva, has amped up the pace a notch and a half. We go through the GT3 RS, you're going to let us go. Kinda. out through here as we're pushed offline. A little jump through there. And remember, we're not on Cup 2s. Seventy something kilometers an hour as we come to Schwabenkreutz. Watch out for the aforementioned oil spill. So we head around the outside of Arenberg, thanks to the Audi who kindly let us through there. Watching out for the fact that it's still wet here. Down to Fuchsruhe. out through here, thank you sir. The noises that this thing makes. So we come through Adenauer Forst. Try and keep it a little bit tidier than that, that was a bit scrappy, but thank you to the guys who kindly let me through there. Whoa, we got the predicted brake going on again then. again oh my goodness the car fully fully put on the anchors there gotta watch out for that this lap is feeling very smooth right now and a lot of fun so we get back to some of the under tree areas We've got the miss hit miss miss the first one come in to hit the second one Miss the third one, unwind it towards the siphon. Bit of a dab there through the first part. Heavy on the anchors down to second gear. Roll it through, tight G forces. After Brightshide, we're up the hill with an NSX. Respect, sir. Oh, that sounds lovely. Towards Bergberg, heavy on the anchors again here. It's a little bit greasy and wet. Tightening radius. 
apologies for the full commentary. That is where the extra downforce of the GT Black Series or the Senna makes a big difference. The speeds with which we fly past other people as we go 230, 40 kilometers an hour around this. More swooshes. Carousel. Keep it on the blocks to the exit. That was a smooth exit. No TC kicking in. track here. Are people going to kindly let us through? Thank you. This one as well. We're back out from a yellow flag, unleashed from the traffic. Oh my gosh, the compression. The line through here I always absolutely love as you fly through those S's and the closing speed in front of us. But you know what? This is where I am cooling the brakes because that was, that was a quick lap. That was some adrenaline flowing. We'll take it easy. Keep to the right hand side. <laughs> this thing is absolutely silly. Totally silly. That has been the most incredible experience. That is a loud M3. My word. This car is certainly on edge. It's a little bit sketchy, a little bit kind of uh, has you on your toes. There's no denying that, but it's phenomenally fast and so much fun to drive. For sure, the Assetto Fiorano would be more planted with the suspension change, but this is just, whew. <laughs> oh my goodness. What an experience. Actually qualifying, I got this wrong. We've got full battery. I completely misunderstood the technology. So we've got full battery in qualifying because I'm not driving like a GP track. <laughs> the NSX. This is where, of course, that makes sense. If you're absolutely 100% on a GP track where it's full throttle, maximum braking for a corner, full throttle, maximum braking, that's where it would drain. But there's so much on this loop where you're basically coasting it around. Got it now. Should have remembered that one. Anyway. What a feeling. <laughs> what a feeling. Back where we began, kind of funny that, isn't it? Anyway, we're here with the Team SX GTS. It's been phenomenal. I've just fully fueled it back up. Actually, surprisingly little fuel needed to go back in here. Only about 12 liters per lap. I mean, we did a lot of electric, but then it was charging the electric off the combustion engine. Anyway, enough waffle. The thing is, like I said, it's not an Assetto Fiorano. It's a GTS, it's not a coupe, and it's not even the most likely future Versione Speciale that will probably arrive as well, the track special that Ferrari potentially will introduce. And don't forget, this platform has also spawned the likes of the Challenge Series cars, the GT3s, GTEs, tons of different race cars based on this platform because it is phenomenal. The sound is insane. In fact, we did actually go for another cheeky little lap, roof down in E-Drive afterwards, until E-Drive ran out, of course, and just the fun of it the fun of it. It's a very, very, very boisterous, entertaining car to drive. It's not as poised as the SF90 Stradale. It doesn't have that extra something on top, but what it does give you is an amazingly good time. And that is what a car like this should be. I enjoyed it an awful lot, and I hope you enjoyed the video because lap two, the pace was definitely 
picking up a fair bit, having fun with it, enjoying the car, enjoying the drive. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.